What's up, everybody? Welcome to the latest edition of the Stephen A. Smith Show. I'm usually with you, as always, at the very least, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday over the digital airwaves of YouTube. We're here in my studio, thanks to our official studio sponsor, FanDuel Sportsbook. FanDuel is the official sports betting company of the Stephen A. Smith Show. Please make sure to like and follow the Stephen A. Smith Show on YouTube. Just click the bell to get notified of all of our new content. And be sure to pick up a copy of my New York Times bestseller, Straight Shooter, a memoir of second chances and first takes. It is my honor and privilege uh, to have this special edition, even though it's still, you know, it's on a typical day. It's a little bit different today, ladies and gentlemen. My guest today is really not a guest. He's my friend. He's my partner in crime officially. My brother, the newest co-host of ESPN's First Take every Monday and Tuesday. Let me not forget, he also hosts a popular podcast cl- podcast. Club Shay Shay. I mean, millions of followers. I mean, the brother's just blowing up. He's just blowing up, okay? By the way, I'd like to add this. He is a three-time Super Bowl champion. He is a Hall of Famer. He is recognized as, as one of the greatest, if not the greatest, tight end in the history of the National Football League. My partner in crime. My man. The one and only Shannon Sharp. What's going on, big time? How are you, man? How's everything? I'm I'm doing great, Stephen A. Thank you for uh, allowing me to share this platform with you as you have allowed me to share the platform on ESPN First Take. So I'm extremely excited to get this interview underway. Man, listen, first of all, it's an honor and a privilege to have you. It's a big time interview. You know I've been waiting for this for a long, long time <laughs> to be sitting down with you. When you had me on Club Shay Shay a few weeks ago, I said, listen, man, I'm loving this. It's going to be a little bit different when I interview you. I can't wait for that. So I said, yeah. as, get, as, as they say, get ready, get ready, get ready. Uh, first question for you, first First of all, I'm, I'm proud of the job that you've done since you've been on First Take. You've been an absolutely wonderful partner and co-host to have. Uh, we've been blowing up the spot. You know what we've been doing ratings-wise. Uh, it just is what it is. I, I want to know, first of all, how do you feel about your time on First Take thus far? I feel great. Um, you guys have welcomed me with open arms. Uh, the opportunity that you've given me to share the platform with you, that huge platform, um, Jimmy Pataro. Uh, Bob Iger, Burke Magnus, everybody has been great to me. So um, even the the security, everybody is seemingly so happy to that I've joined, and I'm extremely excited also, and I can't wait to continue this uh, this beautiful relationship. I got to tell you something right now, man. We you know we make big things happen, and and I don't know I, I don't know if you know this news, so I'm gonna break it to you. Um, I'm, okay. I'm working on it. It's not finalized yet, but I mean usually when I'm aiming what? to pull what? off something, what we got? What I pull we got, off Stephen something. A? Um, you know you 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 did go you did, if I remember correctly, didn't you go to Savannah State? Did you go to Savannah State? Ain't that where you I went did. to school at? I and, did and, and, go to Is that not an HBCU? Is that not an HBCU? It absolutely, it's is not Winston Salem State, my alma mater. Is that not the HBCU. Absolutely it is. I'm working on bringing first take to both universities. I, I think <laughs> I, 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 I think I, you know, I, I mean, I think I've been a bit unfair because, I mean, Lord have mercy going up against me on the opposite the debate every week. It's, it's You need some support. So we gonna go to your hometown. You good with that? You good with that? I'm I'm not good with that. I'm great <laughs> with that. And with the news that I have that I've received over the last two months, as like I said before, you allow me to share the uh, first take platform. Yep. This might be the best news because this is an opportunity for me and for everybody to get an opportunity to see where I matriculated at, where I earned my degree from, mm-hmm. Savannah State University. And hopefully some of the professors, uh, uh, Dr. McLemore, Dr. Green, hopefully they come out because I want to acknowledge them and I want people to see the Shannon Sharp that you see today a lot of these people had had a hand in helping Shannon Sharp become what I became. Well, listen, it's not finalized yet, but like I said, I'm aiming to make it happen. I Man, know if Stephen A. said, hey, look here. <laughs> Stephen A. said, go have a Stephen, it's going to happen. I, I, I done wrote that in stone. I'm finna call. As soon as I get up there and call with you, I'm about to call everybody in Savannah. I'm working. I'm, first. <laughs> I'm working on it. I'm working on it in the month of November. And, and I ask that, and I bring that up because I know that it's important for you to have a good yeah. time. It's important to you to feel respected, to feel embraced or whatever. And, and I want you to put into your words, is that an accurate description of Shannon Sharp? Obviously for all of us, respect is important, but being embraced, feeling welcomed, feeling supported. Talk about that for a second, just in terms of how important that is to you at this stage and point in your career and your life. Well, absolutely. Uh, I'm a big thing of appreciation. Um, I'm a big proponent of validation. 
Um, we all want, we, Stephen A., we all seek validation. And when people say, no, I don't seek validation, they're lying because of job promotion is validation. Um, you want to make the Pro Bowl. You want to make all NBA. You want, that's validation. If you are, uh, if you sing, um, you want a, 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 a Grammy, you want to sell a million copies, you want a diamond album, that's validation. You want to be appreciated. You want to be respected by your peers to say the job, the job that you're doing, well done. And for, for me to only have been on first take for a month and to have something like this, for you to put this chain of events in motion and for ESPN says, okay, Stephen A, make it happen. Man, you don't, I mean, I mean, words don't, wouldn't do it proper justice, justice of me trying to explain just what this means to me for Savannah State, one of Savannah State's own to be able to come back on a show on a platform like First Take and for everybody to see what's, what's, what I what I was able to become, and it all started there almost forty years ago. Mm. Man, man, I'm humble beyond humble. You know, Shannon, when people look at you right now, obviously they see Club Shay Shay, they see what you're accomplishing, and you're doing big things with that as well. Let me not forget that you got a podcast with Ocho Cinco that you do. If I remember Nightcap. correctly, is that Nightcap? Is it that every Thursday, Sunday, and Monday? Is it after the games? That is correct. That is correct. Okay. And what made you decide to do that, particularly with Ocho Cinco, who, by the way, I got a lot of love for? You know what? I had him on my podcast about a year ago, mm -hmm. and Stephen A., we had instant chemistry. Um, the, he understands uh, the entertainment aspect of it. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to have uh, a certain level of credibility, mm -hmm. but you do have to have the entertainment factor. He understands that. He has a way of, of saying things and making it funny, although he's telling, he's giving you factual context of what actually happened. And so when I pitched the idea to him, he was like, okay, let's make it happen. And so it was really that simple. I got an opportunity to sit down and have lunch with him and his representative, uh, me, uh, excuse me, myself, Jamie Horowitz. We sat down and says, okay, let's try to make this happen. Mm -hmm. And he says, man, I'm all in. And uh, it's been, thus far, it's been a great success. Um, but I always, I'm, I'm trying to give people platforms, trying to give them opportunity. Absolutely. That's what my sole purpose was, was cr creating Shea Shea Media, was to give people like myself an opportunity. I have a platform, so let me share it. Like you've done with me, allow me to come to first take. So let me give people an opportunity. Let me give Ocho Cinco, let me give some of the others an opportunity to show that there are more, they can talk about more than just football. Well, listen, when you say people like yourself, crystallize for the audience what that means. When you're talking about people like yourself, what exactly do you mean by that? I mean, Blacks, um, I wanted to start, you know, for me. Is it Blacks and, and, and this, is it Black folks and that's it? Or Black folks no, that play no, football? No, 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 I'm going to give anybody sorry, an opportunity. I know that, women. but no, no, I'm, and I know Blacks, women, and whatever, but I, I wanted to know whether or not you were really emphasizing former football players. That's what I was really asking. Former former athletes. Okay. Um, But, but, don't... Uh, I, I, this look. This is not a, a charity case or a handout. You right. got to be willing to do the work. A lot of people say they want to be successful, but a lot of people are not willing to put the work in. My thing, the way I look at it, I'm like, if I was willing to work this hard for the Broncos, the Ravens, CBS, Fox, FS1, why can't I work this hard for myself? If I was willing to try to help them grow their business, I should be more than willing to help me grow my own business. Mm -hmm. And that's what I want people to understand. If you're willing to put the work in, I'm willing to give you the help you with the infrastructure and give you the foundation, help you with the foundation in order for you to grow what you want to be. But you got to be willing to put the work in. I can't do everything. Give me an idea of what you want to do. Let's see how we can make this work for the both of us, and then we'll take it from there. When you bring about, when you when you mention hard work, you got to be willing to put in the work. Yeah. I remember your last day on mm -hmm. Undisputed on FS1, mm -hmm. June 13th, 2023. This past June 13th, that was your last day after yeah. the Denver Nuggets. Uh, had uh -huh. beaten the Miami Heat in the NBA Finals. And on right. your last day, I want to show this video of you on your last day at Undisputed because I want the world to to see what you were talking about as it pertained to that very, very hard work you just alluded to. Play that video for me, please. The opportunity that you gave me to become what I became, I'm forever indebted to you. I'll never forget what you did for me. All I ask is when you lay your head on that pill at night, no, I gave you everything I had. You did. I gave you everything I had. 
Express to us what kind of emotions were going through your head at that particular moment, your last day at FS1, Shannon. The finality of it, knowing that that was officially my last day on Undisputed, uh, something that I had poured my heart, soul, uh, my blood, sweat, and tears into it. I moved away from my family um, to move out here to L.A. Where were your family and living, by the way? Where was your family living? They were every, everybody was back in Atlanta. Okay, go ahead. Um, I had a fiance had a fiance at the time. Yep. Um, my kids were in college. Um, mo, uh, my son had just graduated. My daughter was about to graduate. Um, but I had moved away, started out here, and I never really, even I never really wanted to live in California. If somebody mm-hmm. would have told me you're going to be living in California at some point in time in your career or your life, I would have like, man, you out your mind. But to come out here uh, and the opportunity that Jamie Horowitz, when he flew down and we met in the W Hotel and said, okay, you got the job. We're not interviewing anybody else. It's you. Now, I understood that, you know, they had to have a backup plan just in case right. I wanted a little bit more than they were willing to give. Right. But the, just the finality of it, knowing that I had worked so hard, people don't understand just how hard I worked at that job. I mean, what they saw was the two and a half hours a day, but they didn't see the prep the six to seven hours of prep time that I actually did to get ready for the show, the rewatching of the entire show to try to get better says, okay, I said this, but I could have said that he went there. I could have went here. Um, And just the knowing that man it's over and all the people that I had from the stage managers to every last one of my moderators, uh, Joy Taylor started it off and she handed it off to Jenny Taff and Jen Hale and Carissa Thompson and Elika Sadegi and Jamie Maggio, Christina Pink, uh, Ebony Williams, uh, Holly Saunders. I mean, you don't, that's over. And those are relationships and, you know, every stage, Stephen, I know every stage manager from Craig to Johnny and to Karen and Bonnie Lou, who was audio, who we always joked about and talked about our dogs. And she would show me pictures of her dogs. I would show her pictures of my dog. And then the makeup room, Sevia started off, and then jumpsuit, Joe, and then Brett, and, and, and Yuki, and Brina, and New Sheen, and then wardrobe was, was Autumn, and Tracy, nice. and Scent, who was security, who walked me every single day for seven years to my car. Edo, uh, and then I would, sometimes I would get breakfast, Carlos and his staff, um, props, Jeremy, and, and Michelle, See, that's that's what I'm gonna miss. That's what I miss, Stephen A. Honestly, yeah. honest to God. Yeah, I love debating. I thought I had gotten very good at it, but that's what I miss because they became my family because I saw them for 240 days a year yeah. for seven years, and uh, the finality of it, it was over. You do understand that in that lengthy answer that you just gave to my question, you did not mention Skip Bayless one time. You do know that. I do. Um, I am very, very grateful for the opportunity. I would be remiss, and I can't say it enough, that he fought to get me on first take. Mm -hmm. When all the bosses said, no, we want to go to a, a media guy, a journalist across from you, he said Shannon Sharp could do the job. And he fought for me, and he really did. And I think I've been been as humble and as gracious as I possibly could in giving him his kudos for that. But where I push back and where I get upset is that when people say Skip Bayless made Shannon Sharp, Skip Bayless did not make Shannon Sharp relatable. Skip Bayless did not make Shannon Sharp the storyteller that he is. Skip Bayless did not make Shannon Sharp the football player that could break down plays and say, this is what happened, that's what happened, and this is why the play worked or it didn't work. Yeah, I'm going to miss aspect of it. Yes, I miss debating him, but it had gotten to the point over the last six or seven months, and it won't. I won't allow it to ruin the six great years that we had, but it had gotten to the point that it, it, it needed, we needed to go our separate, it, we needed to go our separate ways. And uh, I wish it could have been a little bit, I wish it could have been handled a little different, Stephen A. That's the only thing that I wish. I wish it could have been handled differently, um, but it was handled the way that it was. And I will never, ever forget the opportunity that Fox and FS1 afforded me. But this notion, well, nobody knew who I was. Well, I was a pro member of the Pro Football Hall of Fame, but before I stepped foot in Fox, I had won three Super Bowls before I had stepped foot in Fox. At one point in time, 
I held every statistical record a tight end can hold in the NFL. Most yards in the game, mo uh, 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 thousand yard seasons, uh, uh, catches, touchdown yards. I had all of those. Was I as known or as popular then as I am now? No. And I owe that to FS1. And I owe that for, to Skip for giving me that opportunity. But what Skip and I didn't have the relationship that I have with the people that I missed. Basically, Skip would get to work. I would get to work. I was in my dressing room. He was in his dressing room. It was really like a heavyweight fight. Mm. We barely talked. I mean, honest, honest to God, we might say hello. We go to the bathroom. If we're passing each other in the bathroom, hello, that was it. It was not a carry on a conversation. And then, like, all of a sudden, we get up there and we do what we do and we carry on. No. Well, why not? It was, it was, it was very little communication. Why was that? The well, case? I, I, I take my cue from him. He was not a guy that was very talkative in the morning. That is now, true. Now, remember, I had he worked is, with him true. a little bit right. on first take. Um, once when you were there and a couple of times when you weren't there, yeah. when you weren't there. Yeah. So I noticed that during the breaks, he would get up and leave. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. So I'm thinking to myself, after a couple of times of seeing that, I'm seeing that he's in a mode, he's in a zone yep. in which he doesn't want to be bothered. He's treating this like an actual game. Like I might have my friends, I got my friends, but when we're, they're on the other team, we're not communicating. We're not having the type of relationship that once the game was over or once the game started, we were going to have. And so I just learned like, okay, he doesn't want to be bothered. I'm cool with that because I could do two things. Guys will tell you the way I was in the locker room. I'm joking around, having a great time. Yeah. I'm telling jokes. And the moment is like, okay. Well, look at you and I. I'm locked in. I mean, look at you and I. Yes. Look at you and I. We, 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 you know, we, we, we're the same right. in that regard. I mean, it's please. Right. We're joking around, having a good time. And having in a, a good second, time. And in a second, it's time to debate. We, we turn it on. It's just that simple. It, it, it's, time, it's time to debate. Exactly. And, and you are a lot of times, like during the break, you're quiet. I mean, you're looking up stats. Okay. We, you, we have the, uh, the topics of where we're going to go. Um, but Skip Skip was different. Um, yeah. we didn't have the type of relationship. Um, I think in seven years, Skip and I, we went to I think we had brunch once, mm -hmm. uh, and that's okay. Yeah, that's okay. I don't think Skip's a bad guy, but I didn't develop the type of relationship or the type of excuse me. Let me take this back. I didn't develop the type of work relationship with him that I did with some of the guys that I played with when I was in Denver or I was in Baltimore, mm -hmm. or I didn't develop the type of work relationship that I had with some of the, the, uh, the young ladies in wardrobe or in makeup or Bonnie or things of that nature, mm -hmm. because I didn't get the sense that's what he wanted. So I'm not a guy that's going to force anything. If you, if you show me that you want to have a relationship outside of work, that's, I'll, I'll accept that. Right. If you want to have a relationship that strictly work and it's confined to those two and a half hours that we are, are at work. And when you come into the building, you don't say anything to me. And when we exit the building, we don't say anything. And the relationship that we have is for two hours and 30 minutes. I'm cool with that too. I'm there to do a job. I'm not there to per se make friends. Now, if I, if, I'm a I'm a friendly guy. Yes, you are. And if that's if that's if that's something that you want, okay, fine. But I'm not forcing anything. And you know, I got three dogs. I got enough friends. <laughs> and at this at 55 years of age, right. Daryl McCormick, Bucket, Keith Burns, Burns. Hey, yes, I'm good. Well, and I got, then everything else, everything else happens, happens. I'll say this. I'll come to Skip's defense in the regard that that's the way he has always been when it comes to his work. He's focused. He's locked in. He doesn't say much yeah. before a show. That's just the way that he is. He was that way that's, with me as well. No harm. And I no learned, Stephen, yeah. I learned that early on. Yeah. So for me to try to get him out of that because he would have taken it is me trying to get him off his game. Mm -hmm. And to try to gain some type of advantage against him. Right. So I want him to be at his absolute best. I want him to be in a mode where he's comfortable, he's focused. Right. He's not a guy that does a lot of talking. Um, up until the pandemic, I was getting up at 3 a.m. because I had to get the dog situated, get them taken care of, showered, get to work because we had right. production at 4 o'clock. That was his routine. That's what he liked to do. Once the pandemic happened and we didn't have production, we didn't have production meetings, for like eight or eight, like, like not like four or five months, right? But we still was able to do the show. 
that was a that was for me because I didn't really get anything out of production meetings because me and my researcher and my producer had already spent two hours the night before gotcha. talking about what we was go, what we was going to discuss, exactly. and then we would go down and for another hour discuss it again. So me and my producer are doing three hours. I'm doing three to five hours on my own, and we doing a show for two and a half hours. Mm. I was talked out. Score early this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $200 in bonus bets. Win or lose. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use, by the way. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, over and unders, and, oh, this is a fun one. Player props. That's how granular you can get with FanDuel. You think one wide receiver is going to score a touchdown and everyone's overlooking him? That's where you can make a splash. And that's what makes the game all the more exciting to watch. This is why I love FanDuel. So visit FanDuel.com slash SAS and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the National Football League. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino, LLC. First online real money wager only. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued is non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG in Colorado, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Tennessee, and Virginia. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text NEXT STEP to 53342 in Arizona. 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.com. Org slash chat in Connecticut, 1 800 9 with it in Indiana, 1 800 522 4700, or visit ksgamblinghelp.com in Kansas, 1 877 770 STOP in Louisiana, visit mdgamblinghelp.org in Maryland, visit 1 800 gambler.net in West Virginia, or call 1 800 522 4700 in Wyoming. Hope is here. Visit gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800 327 5050 for 24 7 support in Massachusetts, or call 1 877 8 Hope NY or text Hope NY in New York. There is no I in team, but there is one in Indeed, and that's the hiring platform you need to build your team. When you're hiring, you need Indeed. I'm telling you, it is of the utmost importance to find the right people for your team. You work, you ideate, you live with these people, and Indeed has powerful tools that help you attract, interview, and hire all in one place. Their whole platform is meant to help you because you got a decision to make. And you can't worry about all the nitty-gritty tech-related stuff. I love that Indeed's platform immediately matches you with quality candidates. Boom! It's easy like that. Join more than 3 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. Start hiring now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at Indeed.com slash SAS. Or for good for a limited time. Claim your seventy-five dollar credit now at indeed.com slash SAS. Just go to indeed.com slash SAS and support the show by saying you heard about it on this podcast. Indeed.com slash SAS. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need indeed. When I made news the other day because uh, first on Club Shay Shay and then I had reiterated it. I said, listen, I don't have to go into details. That's their business. It's not mine. But make no <laughs> mistake about it. Um, you know, he was forced out and people were like, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? And they acted as if I was wrong. Or, uh, was I wrong, Shannon Shaw? I will say this. I'm not here to confirm or deny anything. Um, you've been a journalist for almost three decades and I'm sure you've done your homework. I'm very happy with where I am now. Um, I don't like to dwell too much into the past okay. because I don't understand how that helps me in the future. But what it did teach me is that I need to, to make sure objects are closer than they appear. And mm -hmm. I gotta make sure I protect my blind spots. Okay. I appreciate everything Fox has done, FS1 it did done for me. Mm -hmm. I appreciate um, the opportunity that mm -hmm. they gave me. But the one thing I do want to say and hopefully I don't have to address this. Fox has never, ever, ever owned Club Shay Shay. Shannon Sharp has always been the sole owner and proprietor of Club Shay Shay. What Fox and Shannon Sharp had was an agreement that they were cover certain production costs. And once those costs was met, Shannon and Fox would split the revenue generated after that. It was in Shannon's contract that once Shannon Sharp left, Club Shay Shay, 
his catalog and all copyrights came with Shannon Sharp. So can we put that to rest now? When people say Shannon didn't own this, Shannon didn't own that, Shannon Sharp absolutely 1,000% always has, and for the very foreseeable future, unless something unforeseen were to happen, owns Club Shay Shay. Well, listen, the bottom line is this. I ain't that in and out. I tell you that much. This ain't going to get clipped. Yes, yes. <laughs> word for word, <laughs> syllable for syllable. You know, my interview with you in its entirety is going to be aired. Let me go to December 12th, 2022, Shannon. I want you to see yeah. this video right here. This is you and Skip getting into it about Tom Brady. Take a look at this as a fresh reminder. You have no objectivity. It's just straight Brady still, hate. Still. Wait, wait a minute. This is just straight hate by a guy who's jealous that he is still playing at a high level at 45 when you had to stop at 35. Still, that's what you that's do. That's the point. That's what you do. Every time somebody, every time I call something into question, I'm jealous. No. Still, I did well, what I, I did. I never said you were jealous of Baker Mayfield. Still, I did what I did. You make it seem like I was a bum. I'm in the effing Hall of Fame. Okay, I so got three what? Super Bowls. So what? So what? He's way better than you were. I'm better way than you. Better. Still, what I, I got to see what you do. You take personal shots. No, when you, for I, don't, I don't take yeah. personal oh, shots. You time started time it. Time out. You would take a personal shot at me. I so didn't take a personal shot at you. Wait a minute. What are you talking about? You would take a personal shot. Put your glasses back on. <laughs> you see that video right there, Shannon. Uh -huh. Months uh -huh. later. Uh -huh. at, when I saw that, I hadn't spoken to you in years. Years. Mm -hmm. You know, we were mm -hmm. always cool. We never had any issues. Yeah. But I hadn't spoken mm -hmm. to you in years. When I saw that video, I said, I don't have to know him. I know Skip. That relationship is in a world of trouble. Mm -hmm. As you reflect back on that moment, what goes through your mind and how much trouble was the relationship between you two in at that particular moment? There were th a lot of that is my fault because there were times that led up to that that I felt that shots were taken and I let it go. And I should have said something then, but I didn't. And I would bring it to people's attention and they brushed it up under the rug. So that was my fault that it got to that point and he felt that he could go over the top in that situation. I think in any relationship where there's host, co-host, it's boyfriend, girlfriend, it's husband, wife, whatever the relationship is, once one partner has no respect for the other, the other partner then in turn loses respect for said partner. Then I think it's only a matter of time. Because I felt in that moment he had lost all respect for me. He had no respect for me. He's trying to compare me to a tight end. I never said I've always given Brady his credit. I've always given all great players, all players. Trying to compare players. you to a quarterback. I, trying to compare you to a quarterback. Right. Yeah. What I was trying to say in that moment, Brady didn't play well. Brady didn't play well that game. I didn't talk about anything that he had done three weeks ago, three years ago, 20 years ago. I'm talking about that game. And for him to feel that he was trapped and he was losing a debate to attack me personally, when I've stood up, when guys have come on that show and tried to attack him personally, I was his bodyguard. I took the blows and said, hey, this is undisputed. Skip and Shannon, this is not yours. So I was very hurt and disappointed that he chose to go there with me when I've been one of the guys that's been in his corner. So it really, really hurt me. And what hurt me the most probably was there, because I know, this is what I know. And this is what I told my bosses that I don't want to get too specific. Okay, I said, had the shoe been on the other foot, what would have been the outcome? Had I attacked him personally, live on television, what would have happened? But the good in all of that is that when I walk in meetings and I meet CEOs and I meet CFOs and I meet people in charge of ha making decisions, they always say, the way you handled that situation told us everything we needed to know about you and you're someone that we want to do business with because it, it took everything because I had to make a split second decision in that moment, Stephen, I had to make a split second decision. And the decision I made was to have a 
a further long-term career. Because I knew at that moment in time, it was only a matter of time. Mm -hmm. They was going to have to separate us. I knew that. I knew that. Um, I was willing to, to to play out the contract, but I knew it, it, it was going to end because he had it, it started to come with greater, greater regularity, the disrespect. You can say what you, you can say I'm loud. You can say I'm obnoxious. You can say I'm arrogant. But to try to poo-poo my career, a seventh rounder that made that started out on special teams and played so well that I got into the Hall of Fame, to try to minimize that was was very disheartening for me. And I didn't think, look, someone that I don't know discredited my career, I'm cool with that. I can live with that. But someone that I considered a friend or maybe, or we were friendly, but I considered Skip a friend, for you to take that kind of personal shot at me, it really hurt me, Stephen A. It really did. You said in the split moment you had to make a decision. What was I had to make decision? a decision. I'm saying in the split, I'm saying to crystallize in that moment, the split decision was what? What what you did what you did or what were you thinking about doing? What I words, didn't do. What did what are you talking about? What you didn't do? What do you mean by that, <laughs> Stephen A. Man, look here. Over the last seven eight years, I've gone through a lot of therapy to be able to control. And I I rage is good. Control rage is better. Mm -hmm. Aggression is good. Controlled aggression is better. And when you're a professional athlete, you know how to have to how know how to turn it on and turn it off. It hurts more when someone that you know, someone that you trust, someone that you think are a friend would betray you or say something to you to that effect. Right. When people say things outside, if I don't know you, I don't care. It doesn't yeah. bother me. Yeah. But for him to take that shot to say I was jealous of Brady, jealous of what? Mm -hmm. you, uh, I, I'm not saying I'm Brady. I've never said I've people have heard me on undisputed on other shows. Gronk was a better tight end than me. Travis Kelsey Gates. Okay. I'm cool with that. Right. All I could do was get the best out of my God given ability, but for him to take a shot like that, because he's losing a debate and everybody knows Tom Brady didn't play well. It was the 49ers game. Yeah. I think the score was 28, nothing at the half or yes. maybe 35. They were obliterated. They ended up yeah. Yeah. So everybody knew, but to try to, but to try to, oh, you were, you were nothing and you're jealous of Tom Brady. Why? Why would I be jealous of Tom Brady? I'm happy that Tom, Tom was like me, mm -hmm. given an opportunity. He made the most of that opportunity. So, I, I think that was in all of my TV career. That probably was the, I, I, re, I remember going home, calling my sister. I called my brother. Um, my homeboy has, 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 everybody had told him and he had raced home to, he'd watch it. It took a lot. It, it took a lot for me not to, not to put my hands on him. Mm -hmm. It actually did. I'm so thankful it, you didn't do that. I'm so thankful. First of all, I almost broke my hand just shaking, it, just touching your shoulder. You know what I'm saying? I just touched your shoulder, I almost broke my damn hand. You're built like a chiseled brick house for crying out like, good Lord have mercy. And I told you I ain't working out with you. That'll never happen, Shannon. I mean, that's like the, the Rock Johnson working out with Snoop Dogg. I, and Snoop's my boy. I'm not doing it, Shannon. It's never going to happen. I'm not doing no. that. You understand what I'm saying? So thank yeah. God you didn't do that. And you you know, we we spoke after the, for one of the, for the first time in years thereafter because I was really worried and you know how much love I have for Skip Bayless because the same mm -hmm. things that you say about him I got to say about him I wouldn't have been a first take if it were not for him uh, I'm indebted to him for that and he certainly I never had any kind of moment like that with him that you had so it was coming from a completely different place but here's the thing though Stephen A mm -hmm. you can be gracious you can be humble you can be thankful but what my grandma used to always tell me say boy don't be a slave to loyalty sometimes people can give you an opportunity or put you in a situation and feel they can talk to you and treat you any kind of way and you still be beholden to that. That's not me. Mm -hmm. I'm a very respectful person. All I ask, and Jamie Horowitz, if you ever, if anybody who knows who Jamie Horowitz is, ask him the one thing that I said. I said, no man or no person has to respect me, but I'd be damned if I let you disrespect me. I say, I walk in here as a three-time Super Bowl grain winning champion, I said, I'm a father, I'm a brother, I'm a son. 
And above all that, I'm a man. And I'm a very proud man. So if you don't want to respect me, just let me go about my business. Because you don't like, you won't like the disrespected version of Shannon Sharp. Mm. And so that's where, that's where I was. And people keep saying, be thankful. I'm thankful. I'm beyond thankful. My brother has done so much for me, but he's not, he didn't disrespect me. Mm -hmm. My grandmother gave me everything, but my grandmother, Stephen, they gave me everything but life. My grandmother's never cursed me. So you mean to tell me because somebody gives you an opportunity, I'm supposed to be beholden and let him talk to me less than? And be appreciative where he you you're all on television. You making a lot of money. Damn money. I had money. I was I was a multi-millionaire before I stepped foot in LA. I'm appreciative. I'm thankful for the opportunity. But I believe you can do something for someone without have to constantly remind him of what you've done for them. Or you have to constantly bowing down and taking your hat off to say that I'm thankful and I'm gracious. I've done things for done things for people. You will never know unless they tell you. I don't mention it. I don't care. That's where I am. I just refuse to be a slave to loyalty and allow people to walk all over me because they've done something good for me. Shan, That's where I am. Shan, I want to switch a uh, left for a second because I've said this to people about you and I, I want you to know that I've said this to people about you. I've never shared with you that I've said this to people about you, but it's just something that I deduced because I went to school at Winston-Salem State and I went to school in the South. And I said to anybody that would listen, whenever they asked me about you, I said, here's what I know, other than the star football player that he is. In my opinion, you can tell that Shannon Sharp I know you were born in Chicago, but moved to Georgia when you were three months old, if I remember correctly. That's what my research says. Obviously, you played at Savannah State. I'm thinking about a black man in the South growing up in the 70s and 80s and the level of disrespect one could imagine you had to have been exposed to, particularly as a proud black man. And so as a result, you're not going to come up to him. And I'm not talking about Skip Bayless. This is not about Skip Bayless. This is about you. Mm -mm. This is about black men, particularly in South. Black men, period, but especially in the South, particularly during those times. There's a level of vitriol, venom, um, and beyond that one could easily surmise y'all have been subjected to to the point where that thing that you just talked about, disrespect it ain't happening you're not tolerating it and when you see this guy who is loud who will get in your face who will challenge you if you approach him the wrong way etc etc that's not rude that's not disrespectful that's not un- that's not unprofessional that's a person that's proud and is letting you know there's a certain standard you will treat him mm-hmm. with that is yeah. what i have always said about you since yeah. or at least over the last year or so late year or two when people have asked me about you am i wrong in that description no you're absolutely right because of the way i carry myself because i give everybody a certain I, I believe everybody deserves a certain level of respect no matter what i might think of someone i will give them a, a level of respect mm-hmm. just as a common courtesy as a man as a woman as a human being being a person i will give them that level of respect and I think the thing is, the, the, when people see me out, I'm kind of nothing like I, what I am on television. I'm kind of quiet. I'm kind of to myself. I'm reserved. One of the things that people that once they get to know me is that I'm not as boisterous at home. I'm I'm in my own place. Right. I you know I get my point across. I have a a a, a voice that projects. I, I can be charming. I can be charismatic. I can be I can be loud. I can be a lot of different things. But I don't think I, I, I've never carried myself and I don't think I'm better than anybody. I might think I can do my job better than you could do your job, but I don't think because I was a prof- ex-professional athlete or I'm on television, I'm better than you. I don't carry myself like that. All I ask, all I've ever asked from anyone was to give me the level of respect that I've shown you. That's all I've asked. That, that's, that's it. I don't, I don't, I don't, you know, d- disrespect yeah. anybody. Uh, to this day is yes, sir. No, sir. Is yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Um, I've kind of gotten away from holding the doors 
for, for women because I don't want them to say, well, he held the door because he wanted to look at my butt or <laughs> I don't ride the elevator. <laughs> Stephen A., I don't ride the elevator with single women. Wow. I don't, if, if a server comes to my room and she's a female, I'll take the cart at the door. I won't allow them in my room. They start to clean the room. I'll go sit in the hallway wow. while they clean the room. I just try to protect myself at all angles. And I've been very respectful to everybody. But that hurt me that day. That that really did, Stephen A. And my sister has become very, very religious. And she talked to me because she was, she was like, Shannon, okay, yes. What he said was wrong. Yes, she did have said it, yes. But you still Shannon Sharp. You still my baby brother. Mm -hmm. You still love. You still got kids that love you. Your mom still loves you. Your brother loves you. You still got millions of millions of people out there love you. So how much harm did he really do? Should he have said it? No. Could he have could could he have went or gone another direction? Yes. And so as time passed by, I started to realize, okay, you're right. You're right. right. And uh but but I but I but I think. You know, it's, sometimes, Stephen, they like, when you do so, it's kind of like a bully. Like, one, once a bully does something to you, if you don't stand up for yourself, That's right. he'll keep doing it. That's right. When it comes to travel, we all have a happy place. Think about it, y'all. Sun, sand, mountains, forests, five-star hotels, and beachside bungalows. My happy place is traveling from city to city, going to big events, and interacting with my favorite people on the planet, all of you. Of course. And Priceline wants to get me, you, everybody where we want to be. They want to help us travel to our happy places for a happy price with deals that you can't miss. Priceline can save you up to 60% off select hotels, 50% off flights, and 40% off car rentals. Plus, they have an amazing bundle and save feature. So when you book a flight and book a hotel as part of that whole package because you need somewhere to stay, you're going to save and save and save. At a rental car, you'll save even more up to $600. See why millions of people trust Priceline with getting them to their happy price. Visit Priceline.com to go to your happy price this summer. We had a conversation, and I won't get into the specific. Who's we? Specific Who's we? Stuff. Who's we, Shannon? Me, Skip, and Charlie Dixon. Okay. okay. Uh, we had a conversation, and uh, I think I conveyed my point fairly well. Um, no matter how much longer I was on the show, how much longer I was going to be at FS1, that level of disrespect wouldn't be tolerated. And you made sure to make that point. And how receptive they were. I know, I've know i known Charlie for years. Charlie's a good man. Uh, obviously, I've known Skip for a long time. How was that received when you said that? I said my piece and I got up and walked out. I don't really think there was anything else to discuss or have a discussion. It had already been said. I just wanted to say my piece. Mm -hmm. Um and uh, I moved on. Right. Um, I have, uh, it, it's like, I really don't have, I, I, I've never had a whole lot of relationship with, with the bosses because I really never really saw them. Mm -hmm. So it's not like, you know, we're going out to lunch or we're going out to dinner or things like that. Uh, that, that wasn't the case. Um, I'm just, I just want to go to work. I just want to go to work, do my job, come home, be the best person be the best person on tele on at personality I can be, mm -hmm. be the best person I can be in my home, in the community. That's all I want to do. Right. That's it. I, I well, all this, all this other stuff that that potentially has to come along with it, I can do without that, Stephen. Well, I can honestly do without that. This, you know, and and I hear where you're coming from, but just three weeks later, I believe it was January fourth, two thousand and twenty three, um, mm -hmm. a couple of days earlier, Demar Hamlin had collapsed. Yeah. On the football field. Mm -hmm. um, the next day on FS1, you were not there. You were not in attendance yeah. for that show. And mm -hmm. then uh, uh, January 4th, you showed up. And here is you expressing your frustration in the aftermath of the DeMar Hamlin situation when you were on the set with Skip Bayless. Take a look at this. Skip tweeted something. And although I disagree with the tweet uh, and, and uh, hopefully uh, Skip would take it down. But I didn't want it. Well, yes. time out, time out. I'm not going to take it down because okay. I stand by okay. what I tweeted. Skip, let me okay. finish. Let me... All right, okay. Go ahead. No, you go. Go ahead. Let's go, Jen. 
Okay. I mean, I cannot even get through a monologue without you interrupting okay. me. Well, you could have came back, Skip. Well, I thought, Skip, just let me. I, I, I was going to bring no, up. No, this. I was just going to say, Skip, I didn't want to yesterday to get into a situation where <sighs> Demar Hamlin was the issue. We should have been talking about him and not get into okay. your not get into your uh, uh, your tweet. That's what I was going to do. But you can't even let me finish my opening monologue without you interrupting. Okay. I was under the impression you weren't going to bring this up because nobody here had a problem with no, that tweet. No. Clearly, the bosses wanted you to offer explanations, so clearly somebody No, they had a did not have... The, nobody... Let's go, Jen. That moment right there, because mm -hmm. usually, as you see me, as I'm prepping for the show, I don't get an opportunity to watch uh, the competition too often, but I, I saw that, and the second I saw that, two <laughs> thoughts came to my mind. Number one, uh -huh. number one, and I told you this when I saw you a few months later. I said, Shannon, never, ever give up that seat. You should have been there right. the next day. You should have been there. I don't, right. I don't give a damn if you yeah. sat up there and said nothing. You can't. You, you don't <laughs> give up that seat. That's exactly what I said to you. Remember that, right? That's exactly that's what a, you did. That's exactly me what that. I did tell you. Tell to never that. give that's up that seat. I sort of said to Kenny Smith when Kenny Smith walked off the TNT said, "That's my brother. I love him to death." But I always, I said, "No, don't give up that seat." That's number one. And number two, right. I also told you that is the day I knew it was over. You mm -hmm. would be leaving. I said, "There is no way." The yeah. Skip Bayless that I know, the Shannon Sharp that I came to know, the television business, the way that I know it, there is no way in hell they uh -huh. survived that together. It is over. Right. Shannon's going to be gone. Your thoughts yeah. that day? You did. Um, you told me a lot of things leading up to that point. Um, I, I, I think the thing for me is that I saw DeMar Hamlin and my brother. I remember watching my brother lay temporary paralyzed on the field, and I saw a lot of uh, uh, DeMar Hamlin in that situation. Um, for me, even and if even though he opened the show the day that I wasn't there, saying his bosses wanted him to offer an explanation. And when I said the bosses had a problem with what you said, he simply said they did not. When he had clearly said to himself that the bosses had a problem with what he said and he needed to clarify it. I agree with you. Um, probably if I could go back and do one thing differently, there, there are a couple of things. Uh, that situation, I definitely would not have, uh, uh, I definitely should have reported. I'm sure they held that against me, but reported to I'm work, sure reported to work. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 I should have, I should have, I, I, I should have, uh, uh, gone in there and sat down and not, you know, if I show up to work, I'm gonna work. It's not like right. I'm gonna sit there and, uh, hold out, <laughs> hold in while I'm there. Right. Right. Um, no, I would have, I would have absolutely done my job. And, uh, that's probably one of the, one of the moments, uh, in my tenure that uh, I'm least proud of that I didn't show up because on all the other jobs I've ever had, mm -hmm. I've never not shown up for work. And for me not to show up for work, um, I should have. And I was wrong in that situation. And uh, maybe they used, maybe that was the final straw. Maybe that was the coup de gras that they used to say, okay, we want to move on without Shannon Sharp, whatever the case may be. Um, I was wrong in that instance for, for not showing up to work. But that particular day, when you responded the way that you responded, when you were interrupted, was that your way yeah. of just saying, I'm done, I've had enough? Um, it's well, over. I was just like, okay, let me get through the monologue. If you have anything that you want to object to, you want to add, you can do it then. At least just let me get through the monologue. Because, you know, Stephen A., like, if you remember a couple of months later, uh, I had an incident at the Laker game with the Grizzlies. Yeah is that when I did what I did, I didn't have anything that that was from my heart. Yeah. I don't put anything in prompter. That was from, that was me speaking. Yeah. And when I was talking, I told about you, you DeMar handled that Hamlin, right too. I told you, you handled yes. that right. Absolutely. Cause you can't the put the DeMar Hamlin situation, right. situation, Stephen A, that was from my heart. There right. was nothing written in prompter, mm -hmm. my farewell speech. There was nothing written in prompter. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted him to let me get through. He could object to anything that I said, that he liked or disliked or he wanted to add, that was fine, but just let me get through it. Hmm. But at that point in time, I just think the thing is, he was like, I don't I don't, I don't really want to hear anything else he has to say. I just want to move on. And that, that was fine. But if you notice, to go back to that Tom Brady, and this is what a lot of people um, was most proud of, that if you didn't see that moment, you would have never know that moment happened in the show. Because I went on and carried on like nothing's happened. Mm. And that happened very early in the show, Stephen A. 
Yeah. I went on and did my job the last two and a half minutes, the last two hours and 15 minutes of that show. If you did not watch that actual segment, you would have never known Skip and I had an issue. That's how well I compartmentalized what had transpired. And I think athletes do a great job of compartmentalizing because a lot of times being an ex-professional athlete, Stephen A., we deal with things that people at home and people in the arena or, or, or in the stadium have no idea what they're going through. But we're able to compartmentalize that and play to a high level. And, and so that's what, I, for that moment, I went back, I'm an athlete. Compartmentalize this, Shannon. Do what you need to do because you're still Shannon Sharp. You're still Libby Sharp, Sterling Sharp's little brother. You're still the father of Kayla, Kaylee, and Kiari. Hey, you can do this. And so that's what I did. Hey, smile, came out the next segment like nothing had happened. I'm inside, I'm an inferno. Right. But I understand that I have a job to do. And when I show up to work, the one thing, you go ask Mike Shanahan, Coach Reeves, rest his soul, is gone away, Brian Billick. When I came, when I showed up, I gave him an honest day's work. And so, you know what? Even though that happened early in the show, mm -hmm. I say I still owe Fox an honest day's work. When it was over, how mm -hmm. fearful were you when you were departing from FS1? Mm -hmm. How fearful were you that those incidences, the apparent friction that existed on camera for all the world to see, mm -hmm. how fearful were you that your career and your career aspirations were going to be compromised because of those incidences? Well, you, 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 you could never be for sure. Uh, you would have liked to have left on the greatest of terms, but even someone that leaves on the greatest of terms, sometimes people might say things. So I really didn't know. Um, I just, and, and, and I was like, okay, I have my podcast. So if, and really Stephen A, you know, ESPN is really the only, the only or the platform that kind of do what I was doing. Mm -hmm. And so I said, well, I don't know. They, they probably not going, they probably not going to give me a chance because they're probably Everybody knows everybody, and they'll probably say, well, he was this and he was that. And so I was like, I I, I really didn't know. I, I really didn't know what to expect. And then talking to you, and he's like, you know, what do you want? You, you say, hey, you, you hit me up. I say, big boy, what you want to do? I say, man, I want to work. I say, I want to work. I say, I think I'm good at this. I think I can be an asset to a, a network. Um, I'm hardworking. I'm do my job, and I'm going to go home. And uh, – he says, well, I want you. You told me, so I want you. And uh, it's not up to me whether they hire you or not. He said, but I'm going to go tell the bosses today that I want you. And true to your word, a um, couple of days later, one of the ESPN execs reached out, got to gauge my interest. That was like on a, uh, I want to say a Wednesday, Thursday. And that Monday morning, he flew down. We had breakfast together. Say, tell me what you want. Say, I'm looking to do this, this, and this. He says, okay. And then you you hit me up. Says, hey, we're gonna green like this thing. I said, all right. I said, bro, you know you know what you're getting. Yeah. I said, I, I work hard. I said, uh, now, I I like to have people to give. You know, on a regular job on a job resume, you have to give like three or four references. So hopefully that ESPN reached out to Fox. I mean, uh, reached out, okay, obviously Fox, but reached out to CBS, reached out to uh, uh, the Broncos, reached out to the Ravens, because those are really the only employees I had. I did manual labor until I was like 18, but right. uh, most of those people that I work for are, are, are no longer with us. Um, and so, Stephen A., to be honest, I really didn't know. I really didn't know, but I was kind of like, man, what if they say this? And I don't have any way to refute what they're saying. So I really, I really didn't know what to expect. Well, but I felt really good. Once you reached out to me, I was at peace. I was going to ask you about that because I wasn't worried about no damn references. I was like, I wanted to know how you, <laughs> how shocked were you that you know that I went public and I said I wanted to Shannon Sharp. I was shocked. <laughs> I'm like, hold on. I was no, no. On God's honest right. truth, I was shocked. I'm like, well, damn. I mean, I'm just. 
the door just closed behind me. Yeah. And here is somebody on a platform, the number one. He's the biggest in morning television. There's no one bigger than Stephen A. Smith. And he's saying that he wants a guy that just let go. A lot of times when people get let go, people automatically think they're damaged goods. He did something. So you were saying, hey, nah, I want that brother. I know that brother. I know that brother's background. And there are too many people that have vouched for him to let me know the type of person that he is. And I'm willing to put Stephen A. Smith on the line. Bruh, when you called me and said, it's not up to me, but I am going to tell the bosses, I have bosses. He's like, yes, uh, first take, I'm the executive producer, but I have bosses over Stephen A. Smith, but I am going to tell them today that I want Shannon Sharp on first take. Now, whether or not you want to come and be a part of that, that's on you, but I'm going to tell them that today. And well, being a man of your word, you did exactly that. Well, people, within a for people that want to know that story, just go to Club Shay Shay. When you sat down and interviewed me, and I explained all, I explained everything, and I explained why. But as we sit here today now, and you've had all of this time to reflect on everything that's happened, you know, and you look at your career and where it's going, because I'm seeing big things for Club Shay Shay. There's mm -hmm. obviously big things for first take, and and I will never root against Skip Bayless. Let me be very very clear. No, I don't. And, I don't. And I, don't I know you won't against, either. So we got free, Sherm. Here's the thing. I've known Richard Sherman and yes. I've given it. In the, we talk about football related things and he reached out. Yeah. I told him, I said, Sherm, you got to devote your time to it. I say, you got to become well versed. We know, mm -hmm. you know, football, you played at a high level. I say, but now in order for you to be really, really good, you're going to have to immerse yourself in basketball. You're going to have to immerse yourself on other sports. You're going to have to be willing to put yourself out there on societal issue because they will arise. I've known Michael Irvin 30 years. He and I have been good friends, uh, you know, 15, 20 years. Right. I don't know Key as well. I know who he is. Yep. I haven't been around him. But how am I going to root for him? Look, if this table, there's food for everybody to eat off of. Right. Even though we're not eating off, even though I'm not eating at the table where they're eating, mm -hmm. there's food on the table for everybody to eat. And that's how I look at it. I won't skip to be successful. I won't first take, I won't first take to be more successful. I'm not going to sit here and say, I right. want them to be as successful as us because right. hell I'd be lying. Right. But I do want them to be successful, just not as successful as us. That's what I've been saying for weeks. Everybody's been asking me about it. I said, I, I, Keyshawn Johnson and I go back nearly 25 years. Yeah. Michael Lervin and I, same thing. Richard Sherman and I have gone back over the last decade. We know each other. I love, I, I love them to death. I love all three of them. I'm never going to root against them. That's number one. And number two, I'm too grateful to Skip Bayless to root against him. I just right. want to be more successful than the competition. Yeah. It's just yeah. that simple. And I know that's hard for people to accept, but damn it, they'll have to get over it. Being in the position that we're in, with first take clearly being number one, um, and now you being a part of it and elevating us even more. The bottom line is that puts us in the eye of the storm and there's a lot of people that throw a lot of shrapnel of criticisms, innuendo, and all of this other stuff. I guess what I'm asking you is, I, I mean, you know how I deal with it. Sometimes I ignore it. Sometimes I tell somebody to kiss my ass. Sometimes I call them the pathetic bastards that they are. We don't have to mention names. You know where I'm coming from. Yes, but, but, yes. but, but, but in your case, you don't have to deal with that as much, probably because you're about 250 pounds and you, you're the Black Hulk and you could break somebody in half. That's probably why you're going to have to deal with this stuff the way that I do. But how do right. you deal with it? particularly now at this point in time in your career. Yeah, my grandma used to always say, boy, don't chase a lie. See, when people say stuff, or oh, I can do this and I can tell this, why would I run that down to try to disprove it? Right. I'm tr You trying to get credibility. You trying to get credibility using my name. Right. You haven't heard me mention your name, nor would I. Right. For me, like, I don't like arguing publicly Right. with people of my community. A lot of times I will DM them. If I have their information, call them and say, hey, bro, what, what, hey, what, what's, 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 our, what's our deal? How do we get past this? How do we right. move past this? Because I, I don't, I don't want to put that out there like, then they like, see, yeah, yeah, we got them. They arguing amongst themselves. I'm not going to do that. 
I'm a big, and if I'm wrong, I've never been too big, too proud, too successful, too anything to say, I'm sorry, I'm wrong. Nor will I ever be too of anything to say I'm wrong. If I'm wrong, I'm going to say I'm wrong. Same here. And if I've hurt, and see, I'm not going to say, well, that, I'm, I don't, I'm not one of those guys that says, well, that's not what I mean. You said I hurt you. You said I said something that wasn't true. Okay, bro, my bad. Ma'am, I'm sorry. That, but that's we live, that's, but, that's, but that's, living in an age, Shannon. We are living in an age, Shannon, where that's not good enough for these guys. Like, li- listen, I, I, I've, I can't tell you how many times I've told brothers, look, have you not seen me on national television say I apologize, I was wrong? I said, mm-hmm. if I'm wrong, Publicly, I'll admit I'm wrong publicly. Right. If I'm right, I'm not budging. If you try to right. punk me, I might get, I might ignore it. And then every now and then I might clap back just to let you know I ain't scared now. You know, whatever it's gonna be, it's gonna be. You know what I'm saying? But you know, you just right. gotta do that sometimes, but you're not you're not really trying to go. You, you but we live in a day and age now, Shannon, covering sports especially. I've seen you on FS1 before, before you got the mm-hmm. first take, and you were like, mm-hmm. I can't believe you we're taught we're not, it's not personal. We're talking no. about your performance. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking. I'm talking. I'm talking about a game. Right. And I think the thing, the thing is, what I've gotten a lot of Stephen A. is that when guys that I've criticized or critiqued or whatever the case may be, when they see me out, a lot of times they'll say, "Man, you tough, but you fair." Right. And that's all. That's that's all. That's all I can ask. I'm not. You know. I, I see. You know. I go to fights and I've been a couple of places and I see guys. If they want to acknowledge me, I'll acknowledge them back. Mm-hmm. If not, I'll keep it moving. It's okay. I, I, no harm, no foul. Mm-hmm. I'm not, you know, hey, you got your life to live. You live your life. I understand. I think the thing for me, Stephen A., is because I was an ex-professional uh, professional athlete, I have a sister, had a mom, got kids. So I think in the back of my mind, I try to be a little bit more. I'm not as probably as harsh as I would have been had I not been in that situation. Mm-hmm. But knowing that I have a sister that heard things and a mom, and it wasn't like it is now, obviously. Right. And kids, I like, I try to be a little bit more respectful. Right. But at the end of the day, we both got jobs. I mean, if you do your job and I do my job, everybody goes home happy. That's right. But if you don't do your job and I do my job and tell people that you didn't do your job, you can't be mad at me. Yeah. They're going to be mad anyway, and that's the way it goes. Just a couple more questions before I let you get on out of here. I mean, I, I'm hearing what you're saying loud and clear, um, and I get that. I can't let you get out of here without asking you about your brother, Sterling Sharp. <laughs> now, 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 yeah. now, Sterling, now, 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 someplace you let uh, uh, Sterling, wait, wait, wait. this brother was something special. I mean, <laughs> I had him when he was playing as the second best receiver in the game behind Jerry Rice. We mm-hmm. talk about Randy Moss. We talk about that other dude I ain't going to even mention no more because I, 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 I <laughs> hell with him. But he's there. He know who he is. Okay, I'm going to leave that alone, right? But Sterling right. Shepard was something special. Sterling Sharp. Sterling Sharp. I'm sorry, Sterling Shepard. Sterling Sharp. I'm sorry, I apologize. What kind of effect has he had on you now compared to what he had on you during your playing days? Well, Stephen A., I had the best role model anybody could ever have. The only person I ever wanted to be when I was growing up was Sterling Sharp. Um, I remember my sister would get so, my sister's eight years older than 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 I am. She's five years older than my brother. Mm-hmm. And she would always say, Shannon, stop trying to be like him. Be your own person. Be your own, be your own man. Stop it. Be your own man. And but what she didn't know, the man that I wanted to be was him. Yeah. So everything that he said, I hung on. Everything that he did, I, whatever number he wore in high school, I got it. Whatever number he wore in college, I got it. When I got to the NFL, I couldn't get 84 because Ricky Nateel had it. When Ricky Nateel was a free agent and he got let go, I, I ran upstairs to Coach Reeves' office. I said, Coach Reeves, can I, can I change numbers to 84? Because I want to be like my brother. He's like, it would be an honor for you to wear that number and be on this team 84. And so I got 84. So every, th- every car that he got, I got the exact same car. Everything. Steven, and people laugh, and people thought I was lying. But if you ask my sister, if you ask my brother, my very first college girlfriend that I got in college was identical to his. 
I'm talking about from hairstyle, wow. complexion, the way she was shaped, the way she walked, everything was just like his. what what was it about him? What was it about him specifically? Man, because you know, my brother was like, I was more talented as I had more God given ability than my brother. I could see him do something and I could go do it. He just worked harder earlier than I did. He had, I was, a, I, you know, I wanted to be the class clown. My brother did his schoolwork, but I wanted to tell jokes, Stephen. I wanted to be funny. <laughs> you know, I wanted to be funny, man. Right. So in the process of me being funny, man, my grades wasn't nothing to laugh, wasn't nothing to laugh at. Wasn't nothing to laugh at. Uh-huh. They were bad. <laughs> I mean, Stephen, to be honest, man, with them, them grades I had coming out, I couldn't have got in prison with them. Wow. Man, they were so low, I needed Damn. a crane to pull them up. Wow. Yeah, they were bad, Stephen. They, they mm-hmm. were bad. And so, and then, so I was going to go join the military. The recruiter, I, the recruiter was coming. I was going to the recruiter's office to take the test. I was going to the Air Force. My brother left Columbia, South Carolina, the University of South Carolina, and he came down. He says, because he's more like a father. My sister is more right. like a mother. My brother's more like a father because they kind of raised me. He said, you're going to go to Savannah State. He said, you're going to go to Savannah State for one year. And if you don't like it, you can say, I went to Savannah State, but it wasn't for me. But you're going for at least one year. He got in his car and he left. Mm-hmm. I went to Savannah State. And it's one of the five greatest decisions that I've ever made in my life. Because it changed my life. Because I was around people, the professors, the doctors, they cared about Shannon Sharp. They had no idea. I think there might have been two professors. One of them told me, his name was Dr. Welch. He was my criminal law professor. He was an old FBI guy. He said, son, come to class. He said, you're smart. He says, I watched you play. Mm-hmm. He said, you're going to go to that, that, that other league, and you're going to be a hell of a player. Mm-hmm. But my brother was so encouraging. I've never w- met someone that wanted more for someone else than he wanted for himself. And, and, for you. and, and, and for vice you. versa yeah. for me, yeah. Stephen A., I would take everything that I've ever accomplished to be able to switch places with my brother so he could have a full NFL career. Take, take me out the hall. Take them Super Bowls. Take the money that I've made. Take the life that I – I would I would rather work, make fifty to 100000 a year and let my brother have a full 14-year career. Man, Stephen A., you don't know. When my brother told me he wasn't going to be able to play football no more, mm. people don't know how many nights I cried. Wow. People don't know that? how many times that I took the field with a broken heart, knowing that what I'm doing, my brother was supposed to be two times. And I'm still, and I'll say it again, I'm the only player of almost 400 men in the Pro Football Hall of Fame, and I'm the second-best player in my family. Nobody else can say that. Nobody, no other NFL player can say they're in the Hall of Fame and they're the second best player in their family. I can say that unequivocally. The one thing that's not that you're not like when it comes to your brother, your brother didn't like talking to the media. Nah. You do. <laughs> you don't mind. Yeah, do. But your brother did not like talking to the nah. media at all. Nah. nah, he's not much of a he it's funny. It's funny that he's funny because we're the flip side. Because, like, when we get together, he does more of the talking than I do. Mm. And when we're in family functions, he does more of the talking than I do. Right. Uh, I, I think he had a bad incident um, early in his career in Green Bay where mm. people's like, I don't know why you drafted this guy. You probably should have took, you, you know, you probably should have traded up to get Tim Brown or you might have should have taken, you know, because Tim Brown, Michael Irvin, Anthony Miller, I think, uh, Aaron Cox, maybe Flipper. There were like five or six receivers that went in the first round that year. And my brother had an okay year. And then the next year, he was first team all pro. He led the league in catches and I think touchdowns. Mm-hmm. And then two years later, when he went on that streak, he had back to back 100 catch seasons. Right. And so it kind of it kind of ticked him off that nobody wanted to talk to him and they thought he was a bust. And then the following year, when he's putting up these numbers, he's leading the league in, in receptions. Uh, everybody says, okay, that was a great, great pick. He's a he doesn't forget as easily as I do. Right. Someone wrongs me, I'll just move on. Okay, fine. He hold he hold grudges a little bit longer than yeah. I do. 
Brother smart as hell. Loved him as a football analyst when he was working on the NFL Network and beyond. I only had the pleasure of meeting him. I think it was once or twice. He was absolutely, he was always wonderful to me. I just like yeah. real people, and he's one of them. He, 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 there's no yeah. fake in Sterling Sharp. Zero. Nah, nah. Zero. But I, but I, but I told him, and he's done a lot better of this, Stephen A. You know, um, holding on to grudges. And I used to, I used to do this also. Right. Um, but my grandma used to always tell me, she said, "Boy, you can." You can never be free without forgiveness. Right. And I, I didn't understand when she was young, when I was younger and she said that. Right. She said, like, because you're holding on. Right. She says, you're not physically incarcerated or in, uh, uh, but your emotions, mm. that person going on with their life, mm. they live in your life and you got your emotions and your feelings held, held captive. Right. Let it go. I'm a shock. And so, uh, I'm surprised you one of these days, man. I'm I, I, I'm thinking about bringing both of the shops on first take. I mean, the debate against me. I mean, you might need some help. You might need some help, oh, Shannon. Sharp. I mean, I might, 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 I if you have any that you want to share about Skip Bayless specifically in your yeah. time at FS1, what would that be? I had six and a half incredible, amazing years. And I won't let six months ruin that. Fox, FS1, the opportunity, along with Skip Bayless. Maybe I should put Skip first because Skip fought for me to get me on that show and the platform that they allowed me to be on for six and a half years. Although I'm disappointed how it ended and the abruptness and the suddenness of it ending, I'm forever grateful for the opportunity that you gave me. I can honestly say I wouldn't be here. Uh, there would probably be no club Shay Shay. I would not be the the name because a lot of times, Stephen A., people don't even realize that I played a sport. Mm. They ask me, how do you know so much about sports? I was like, well, you know, I study a lot. People really don't yeah. because I've been retired two decades. Oh, you know your football, but my brother, especially your football. I, your, 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 your football mom, my brother. I, I, I mean, I step back. I debate, but then you know me. I'll step back and be like this. <laughs> that is a, a damn – Three-time Super Bowl champion. Let me fall back because I don't. Yeah. I, I don't even want to. I don't even want to touch a helmet, let alone get hit. Why one? Sorry. But the people that at Pico, Pico you. Boulevard, because everybody don't know that shit. Pico Boulevard, Pico, Pico Boulevard, Boulevard Avenue of the Stars, at the, Fox lot. the Fox Lot, Los Angeles, California. Go ahead, act Man. like everybody know that. Man, look, it didn't end the way I wanted it to end, Stephen A. But Skip gave me that opportunity. Fox let him have that kind of leeway to give me that opportunity. And so I'm forever grateful. Jamie Horowitz, who believed in me, and I'm like, bro, what are you talking about? I can be a star on television. Yeah. I say, bro, you, I mean, y'all gonna let me be me? He says, we want you to, I say, y'all don't even, I say, you don't even know what me is. Cause all you've seen was a decade of, uh, uh, of CBS. Well, Jamie's you don't that even dude. know what me is. Jamie's that dude. He got me started on first take. You know, Jamie had to approve me get, Jamie had to support me getting on first take. It wasn't, it skipped. Obviously it, it starts with skip or, or gratitude right. due to him. But if Jamie right. Horowitz hadn't gone to the honchos to support me, I wouldn't have been on first take. So we both yeah. owe him. So that, and so I'm forever grateful. Fox, FS1, thank you. Continue success for whatever guys you guys doing over there. You got an outstanding lineup from um, Speak for Yourself, uh, First Things First, Nick Wright. I know Nick. Nick's a great friend of mine. Joy, who's on Speak with Acho and Shady McCoy and Skip and his new team. Guys, I wish you all guys all the best. But I don't wish you better than Skip and Richard and... Keyshawn and Michael Irvin, y'all not going to be better than me and Stephen A. That's not going to happen. Mm. I promise you, that is not going to happen ever, ever. Now, if Stephen A says, you know what? I'm going to move on. Or he says, Shannon, I want to go in a different direction. Y'all still not because Stephen A, that dude. And if Stephen A ever decides to leave and turn the reins over to me, y'all know I'm that dude. I'm him. And now is open. the problem that y'all got is that y'all got two hymns 
to go up against. <laughs> I got you. By, Y'all by, got two hymns. By, by the way, I'm not gonna let you get out of here without ask, answering a question about LeBron because you got some explaining. Ah, you know, go, but, go, but, go, but, go before, hold on, hold on, hold on. Before this, before that, you know, you, I mean, Shannon Sharp. I mean, you, you, you don't have a podcast that says Shannon Sharp. You have a podcast that says Club Shay Shay. Club Shay yeah. Shay is a pretty fly name, and there's a lot of people out there <laughs> speculating about your dating life and stuff like that. Care to share anything? I mean, you, you, you single, you eligible? Did you know what I mean? Ain't care to share anything? I just want to make sure that that I'm 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 me me and this little guy right here, Teddy, <laughs> me and Teddy bro, we okay. we a happy we a happy couple, right, bro? Uh, uh, and he got two, he got his two brothers. Stephen, hey, bro, I'm too busy wrapped up in you. Right. I I I got I got I got to pull my I got to pull my weight. Okay. I'm only on two days a week. Right. I got to be my absolute best right. Mondays and Tuesday to show that Stephen A was well was right. You're already and putting proving himself that. out there. You already proven that, bro. Well, I ain't no. Yeah. I, I don't have. I don't. Right now, I ain't got time. Okay. So if that, I ain't got, I ain't got time to be anything serious. That ain't happening. Okay. I got. You. And plus, I got to grow Shay Shay Media, right. and I got a whole. I got Nightcap with Unk and Ocho. I got another something that I'm gonna announce here in yep. the next couple of days. Yep. Stephen A. But right now, there. Are, <laughs> I, I ain't got time for a relationship. I'm. 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 Right now, I'm dating. Uh, I'm dating first take. Okay. And we happy. All right. Well, you know, I've been dating first take for a long time, too. But You've been dating. It can't, it can't, it can't uh, stop. You it. ain't dating. It can't stop. You ain't dating. You married. You married now, bro. <laughs> it you saying, married. I'm married. I'm married to first That's take. I'm married to first take. <laughs> I got you. you. Uh, now, now, listen. Before I let you get on out of here, here's the deal, man. I mean, the one thing that's not going to listen, people think that they're going to see the end of you will come end of football season. Oh, no. As long as LeBron James is still around, I know your ass is going to find a way to annoy me by calling me, by calling me and coming on first take and I just trying to take over. I call the show. That's right. Let me tell I you something. I call the show. Let me tell you something right now. It's not going to work, Shannon. I defer to your excellence come football. Go. But, 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 go. but he's you go. need to stop. You need to stop that one, but LeBron James. He's number two all time. That is not an you insult. Know, That's you, not an let insult. Me, let me, let me, let me, let, I'm gonna, this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to come out, I'm going to come out on first take with an entire goat suit. Not just the mask. Do don't do that. I'm gonna come don't out with that. the goat please suit and a 23 please, please Laker don't do jersey on. Please don't, please don't That's do how that. I'm gonna do it. Please don't do that. First of all, can you, can you win the championship again before you do that? If you're gonna wear the yes. goat suit, because that, that's not right. Lakers ain't winning no championship now. They're gonna be competitive. Okay, they're gonna be in the mix. Already, they're gonna be in the mix. But they ain't winning the championship now. Okay. I think that's going okay. a little bit too far. You will. You willing to bet? You willing to bet against Goat James? Yes. Why would you do that? Yes. Yes, because it's not about him. It's about the it's about the brother that you got to bet with me for that he go play sixty five games. I already oh, won the AD bet. I already AD, won the bet. AD. Ain't no way in hell Anthony Davis is playing sixty five games in a regular season. He ain't gonna miss the playoffs, but it, 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 he ain't playing sixty five games. Sixty five. Say it with me. Sixty five. No, no, you, you did tell. Let me tell the audience. Me and Shannon have a, a bet because I told him <laughs> ain't no way in hell. That that Anthony Davis is playing sixty five games this year, so we, we we both like Boa Restaurant. We like Boa. I, I like a few. I mean, I'm a catch fan as well. You know, say mm -hmm. Maestros and all of that stuff. But Boa, we like a lot. And Shannon's already plotting to order his most expensive dinner he can find because I'm gonna have to pay up. He don't realize he's gonna have to pay up. Ain't no way mm -hmm. in hell. Anthony Davis, Mr. $62 million man, by the way, but he deserves mm -hmm. it. As long as he's healthy and he's bringing his A game, he deserves it. But he ain't playing yeah. 65 games. AD ain't going to let me down. Oh, God. AD ain't going to let me down. Oh, stop. You need to stop. AD ain't going to let me down. So what you trying to say? And with what, a what, what with, AD, with AD give me 65 and GOAT James being the GOAT that he is? Entering season 21. What have you seen? Have you seen any slippage? No, not for me. Because I have no, not. No, 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 no. I know. Hey, LeBron James is that dude. He's everything but Michael Jordan. He's everything but Michael Jordan. You That's know it. what? You That's know it. what? I'm gonna I'm gonna say something that you're gonna agree with. What? Had LeBron James came first and had a tennis shoe and did what he did, guess what? He would be the GOAT. No, nope. we only said that, that is not true. First. That is not true. The fact is, is that Michael Jordan didn't have that performance against the Dallas Mavericks in the finals. 
That's just a fact. He don't have six NBA Finals losses. He was you know, Michael Jordan was nine time six. All Defense. He only went to six. How do we know he had no, he wouldn't have lost four in a row if he had gone to ten finals? Excuse me, he would have won eight straight had he not retired. No, he ain't no. We don't know what straight. he would have done. They would not have lost to the Houston Rockets. I told Kenny Smith that, by the way. The I told Kenny Smith that he had to take a break because of burnout. Can you imagine the vitriol and the blowback Goat James would have got if he says I need and, a year off and, because of? In all seriousness, team? in all seriousness, respectfully, seriously, on a serious note, no joking, no, no all joking aside. Yeah. If LeBron James, God, thank God, Bronny is okay. But if LeBron James had a death in the family the way Michael Jordan had a death in the family and decided to step away, people would not have criticized LeBron for that. Man, they criticize everything. They criticize the man going to the game. They criticize Bron- They criticize Bronny for taking the opposite race to the prom. They never, Jordan ne- never had to experience the vitriol be it him and his family. Oh, po- yeah. What? What? Michael Jordan no, no never media. had to admit. Excuse me. Mm-mm. There was no media. There was no social media. That's it's true. Well, that's it. That's and the game still, changer right there, Stephen still, A. Stephen still. A, that's the game changer. That's the game changer. Okay. okay. So, in other words, because of social media, LeBron James deserves credit. That's you telling me? Because social media LeBron- deserves credit? No, no. LeBron James is the GOAT because he the GOAT on the basketball court. No, he's not. No, he's not. No, he's not. You need to stop. But you know what? I don't care we what go, you say. We gonna table. You can say we gonna table this. We got Club Shay Shay. We got Stephen A. Smith. A we got all season don't long make it the first truth. take. That's right. A thousand lies that you tell it don't make it the <laughs> truth. Okay. <laughs> Club Shay Shay. Stephen A. First take. We got three damn outlets at the very least to go at about yes. this come NBA season. But uh, here's what here's what we both will agree on. Okay. There are worse places to be than Southern California. And when the yeah, Lakers, yeah, 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 and when yeah, the Lakers, yeah, yeah. And, when the Lakers nice. nice. and when the Lakers are winning, Ooh. it is just a buzz through the city that is just special. It it yeah. really is. Everywhere you it go, is. the vibe just feels different when the Los Angeles Lakers are relevant. Well, well, you know, I did relocate from Atlanta, which ain't a bad place to be either. Not at all. But you know what? Not at all. I don't foresee myself going back to Atlanta, relocating back to Atlanta, leaving Southern Cal. I don't. Mm, I don't. I don't blame you. You know, I might have to come <laughs> out there. You know, I got to come out there more because I promised you I was going to be out there twice a month to do you, the show with you. So I'm going to be out there a lot. I'm going to keep my word. But you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it was, okay. a, it was a great. I, I wanna, and we, you know, we're right, we, we practically neighbors. That's we right. practically neighbors. I want to state this for the record for all the listeners and the viewers out there. Um, it was very difficult for me to have to drag myself to 90 degree weather in Southern California. <laughs> but I managed to suffer through it and just do it. <laughs> Shannon Sharp, man, I appreciate the time, man. Thank you so much, man. I'm so happy to have you on board on First Take. We're going to continue to do our thing. You're a proud addition to the show. Everybody love you, my man. Molly loves you. Ryan Clark, Swagoo, Marcus Spears, Mad Dog Russo, Dan Olofsky, you know, Jeff Saturday. The list goes on and on and on. The I'm entire excited. The entire team is proud and happy to have you on board, my man. I'm proud to call you my brother. Proud to have you as my partner in crime on First Take every Monday and Tuesdays, man. Keep doing your things with Club Shay Shay, and you know I'm always here if you need me. Appreciate you, bro. Okay. Enjoy the rest of your day. All right, my man. Take care. Ladies and gentlemen, that was a wonderful, wonderful time I just had with the great Shannon Sharp, three-time Super Bowl champion, NBA, uh, NFL Hall of Famer, uh, one of the greatest tight ends in the history of football. Now my partner on First Take every Monday and Tuesdays on ESPN, 10 a.m. to noon Eastern Standard Time. Of course, make sure to support Club Shay Shay as well. Really, really appreciate all our great work and the hard work that he's putting forth. He's got a very, very bright future in this industry, no doubt about that. I'm just happy uh, that he's uh, allowed me to share some of it with him by blessing me with his presence to come on the show that's it for this edition of the Stephen a smith show thanks for watching another episode uh you can watch me at the very least every monday wednesday and friday over the digital airwaves of youtube make sure to like and follow the Stephen a smith show right here on youtube click the bell and get notified for all of our new content and be sure to pick up a copy of my new york times bestseller straight shooter a memoir of second chances and first takes can't say enough about the time he just gave me it was a big time interview to say the least but there's many more that's coming, so stick around. Keep tuning in to the Stephen A. Smith Show. Thank y'all for y'all support and your love. Until next time, this is your boy Stephen A. signing off. Peace and love.